Paramount Pictures is currently filming a major motion picture in North Georgia called Very Interesting Things, which you'll see once you check out that movie. We generally work on a few different types of projects. Obviously, we do a lot of short films. Michael, how did you get started in filmmaking? It's um, a very large part of the success of any project. Um, I started my filmmaking career actually on a cruise ship, making short films. Wow. I'm the executive producer to our new feature film, um, The Calm Denominator. Tell us a little bit about your character in the film. She's really upset um, from the beginning, from the get-go. Tell everybody a little bit about yourself. Well, basically, I, um, I somehow started acting in uh, 1992. Hello, I'm Lakeisha Love, and I'd like to welcome you to another great episode of Rural Hollywood, a show that takes an in-depth look at the movie industry in the Southeast and beyond. On today's episode, Priyanka Karan will sit down with David Days of Film One Studios, who is a filmmaker based in Augusta, Georgia. It's about his upcoming feature film, The American Street Fighters Trilogy. But first, Jessica Page will sit down with a filmmaker based out of Savannah, Georgia, Deshaun Bullock, to talk about his upcoming feature film, Gangsta Gangsta. Hi, I'm here with Deshaun Bullock, who is the director of the upcoming film, Gangsta Gangsta. Thank you for coming. Welcome. Thank you for having me. Um, first, I want to talk about your experiences in the music industry because this kind of led you into doing filmmaking, right? Yes. So talk first about your experiences in the music industry. Okay, well, uh, I started producing roughly around 1995, 1996. Uh, I was just purely in the music production, uh, you know, started learning uh, live instruments or whatnot. And in 1999, uh, I got with this local rap label in Savannah, Georgia. and. Mm -hmm. uh, we produced uh, an album with a group called Crime Affiliates. Mm -hmm. uh, it, charted, it charted Billboard, and we had a distributor, and we sold 50,000 units uh, in, uh, with that uh, independence distributor. But uh, when, if people, people who uh, have experience with independent distributors, they understand that the money is kind of funny. <laughs> so uh, we eventually got another distributor in 2000, and one of the members of the group, uh, his name was Camouflage, he broke off and did a solo album. Mm -hmm. And uh, his album was successful, and we did like an, around 60 or 70,000 units with his independently, but we had a bad distributor then. Mm -hmm. So Universal Records picked up his, his, his uh, second solo album, mm -hmm. and I was the A&R for that album. What is, now I saw that on your bio, what is an A&R for those artist, people who don't know? Okay, A&R is artist and repertoire, and basically I was responsible for uh, helping to groom and guide the artists okay. throughout that, the, the process of making sure that that album it has some type of successful okay. you know, uh, process, successful track or whatnot. Okay. So, like yeah. a babysitter? Well, you know what I used to call myself that? And uh, he used to get mad. But uh, I was in a sense like a babysitter because I had to cater to him. Uh -huh. and, you know, I didn't have to feed him a burger or But yeah, I had to keep him clean. You know, I had to right. definitely try to direct him. And, okay. uh, you know, and I also produced a third of the album. The album had about 20 songs, and I produced seven, seven of the songs. So that was a great experience. Um, but that's what eventually led me into filmmaking. And I did, like, two more albums with Camouflage, but we did that, uh, the one with Universal Records in 2001, and that's when I wanted to take my, 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 my entertainment career to the next level. So that's inspired you to go into Filmmaking, how? Because you wanted to do. First, what? it started with the music videos because when I was in A and R for oh, that okay. project, I, um, I had to pick all of the, the directors for the music videos that we shot. Okay. And the first director that I picked, that I worked with, was Brian Barber, who I uh, just did Idlewild or whatnot. Big up to Brian. Um, he's a real, real, real cool guy. And working with him, he kind of took me up on this wing. Uh -huh. And. I just fell in love with the music video experience. I was like, wow, I'm enjoying oh, this. Okay. Because I was always producing music. Mm -hmm. And uh, then watching people take that, that, that audio and turn it into a visual component, I just found that to be marvelous. So I went on to film school after that. I was okay. like, this is something that I need to do. And also, 
we were paying so much money for music videos, I was like, wow, you know, I could learn this skill and probably yeah. cut down on, you know, on like a great deal of the cost, and that's what happened. Okay. Yeah. So how did you end up going into feature films? Well, uh, when I got to film school, uh, in film school you have to shoot a lot of short films. Right. And like they always say, if you could tell a story in eight minutes, then you can tell one in 80 minutes. And I, I've shot like over 20 short films. I've had pretty good success with that mm -hmm. in the, um, in the, um, what is the, the uh, film festival circuit. Oh, okay. I've had, you know, success in that aspect. I've also done a documentary as well, and um, I had success with that in terms of, um, on, on, you know, selling it. But okay. uh, I said, well, I want to try my hand at this feature because I've been able to shoot a lot of shorts, and the way I approached it, I said, well, a feature film is just a combination of a bunch of short films, mm -hmm. you know, because you've got so many different stories, you've got allegories within the story. So I said, well, what I'll do is, I'll just approach it as shooting a bunch of short, different short films because I'm accustomed to doing that. And I really had this story on my mind for like two years mm -hmm. that I wanted to shoot the story against the gangster. I just really wanted to shoot it. And I, it had another name at first, mm -hmm. but it, that name came about because that was like a pretty common theme mm -hmm. in the hip hop era back in like the early 90s mm -hmm. with our NWA. And that's what spawned the name Gangsta Gangsta. I remember that. You remember that, huh? Not, I'm not as young as I look. <laughs> <laughs> I remember, mm -hmm. I remember. So, okay, tell us about the movie Gangsta Gangsta. Okay, uh, basically, Gangsta Gangsta is a film that highlights the self-destructive nature of the African-American male in the hood. And how that self-destructive nature just trickles down and impacts everyone mm -hmm. that that individual is connected to negatively. Mm -hmm. So the, the lead character's name is Mac, and I did the Spike Lee thing. I'm actually mm -hmm. starring in the film as well. And the lead character's name is Mac, and Mac... You're the lead character? Yes. Okay. And Mac is the type of individual, he's very selfish. He has like a typical background, and I hate to say it like that, but it's true. Mm -hmm. uh, he has a girlfriend, has the baby mama. Mm -hmm. And uh, what happens is, you get to see how everybody who he's connected to is impacted because all Mac wants to do is live for himself. You know, he has a child, he hardly ever spends time with his child, mm -hmm. and eventually you'll see that that child will probably start picking up some of those habits. Mm -hmm. And it'll, it, it'll, it'll become a, a thing where he's sending those negative messages right. and sending that, uh, it's, it's almost like the child will be inheriting that negative wow. lifestyle. But uh, Mac has a lot of other friends in the movie who are, who are, in a sense, bad influences because in the beginning of the movie, Mac is just working. He, he got out of the street lifestyle. One of his uh, close friends, who he used to do a lot of things with in the streets, prior to him going, his friend going to jail, gets out of jail and pulls him back into that life. Oh. So it just, and, and then they start turning on each other. And then you just see this big, melting pot of corruption that exists right now in the hood because it's, it's, it's like with Mac, his mentality is, I wanna do right, but the opportunities aren't there for me to make the money I wanna make. See, I'm not gonna work I'm for a little the right bit. Thing. Right, and it's like the microwave generation, I mean the microwave mentality that this, the generation beneath me has. Mm -hmm. It's like, I just want it now. I don't wanna right. work for it. You know, I want it right now. Right. Yeah. yeah, that's my generation. Yeah, <laughs> don't want to work for anything. Don't want to work for anything, and it's, and 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 then it's, it becomes well. Since I'm not going to work for it, I'm going to take it. I'm going to get it how right. I want to get it. But I'm not going to work for it, and I'm going to get it some kind of way. And that's what I'm showing in this movie. There's a lot of, you know, taking going on. There's yeah. a lot of laziness. There's yeah. a lot of just not working for what you want. Mm -hmm. Just wanting it by tomorrow you know, poof. I'm working on something, you know what I'm saying, before I got the halfway house. They can bring us a lot of money. So if you're down, man, we need to go ahead and get this money, bro. I can't be out there wild like we used to, bro. I'm gonna be real with you.
Oh, yeah. What up? The lap is out. It ain't a secret. I know you see it. I know you weak in your heart. It just stop beating. Hey. No reason. Ain't no more talk. You want to take the money or something? One thing about it, I'll find him. I heard you been looking for him. Man, man. You're a little late on the payments, aren't you? You're an entrepreneur? Mm -hmm. I mean, what are you doing, Beth? I'm on the phone with Silicon Beth. I see you chilling. I see you doing your thing. Anything go wrong, anything flaky, man, y'all got to see me, man. That's my people. If you're the police, I'm going to see about you. It's just that simple. We don't need your dirty money. I'm so serious. Oh, so you gonna play me like I'm crazy, right? Are you serious? Where are you getting this from? Just don't trip on me because I'm an entrepreneur and I work for myself. So what motivated you to talk about this topic and be a part of sending this message if what if there's a message that you is it the is it the kind of movie that you're trying to send a message or is it just trying to make people aware of what's going on what motivated you to, to do this first and then talk a little bit about what message you want to what what sort of influence do you want to have with the movie okay well basically i come from that background mm -hmm. you know um lived in the pro projects when you know, I was a real, you know, as a youth mm -hmm. came up and, you know, my mom did the best she could mm -hmm. and moved, moved us out of there. And then we moved, you know, to we, we, we constantly moved to a better environment, you know, mm -hmm. depending on what my mom could afford. And so so all of my friends have been, you know, street guys, basically, mm -hmm. you know, who do their thing. Mm -hmm. And of course, I never knock anybody for what they do. Right. But like I've always had friends, like when I used to hang with my friends, they used to be like pushing me to go to college because that's my God-given gift. My God-given gift is my mind. Right. I'm not a hustler, that's not me. I tell anybody that I'm not even ashamed, that's not my thing. Mm -hmm. but my God-given gift is my mind, so that's the talent that I use. But my friends would always say, man, go to school, man. You're gonna be the first one from our hood to get a degree, man. We really want you to go to school. And I would hang out with them and kind of be getting pulled into that lifestyle, mm -hmm. they pushed me away because they didn't want me because they saw something in me. They saw, they saw the potential that I had, mm -hmm. even when I didn't see it. So I just felt as though in, in the Savannah community, Savannah, Georgia, that's where I'm from, that community is really near and dear to me because I was able to, you know, to educate myself. A lot of opportunities, you know, came about from Savannah. They supported my music career. So I just felt like I had to give back and the movie uses a lot of uh, actors from that area mm -hmm. who just haven't had the opportunity to get out and, and find work because Hollywood, Hollywood is all the right. way across the right. nation, all the way across the coast. So, uh, you know, the, the movie provides a lot of Savannah natives the opportunity to work. And although it is an urban film, mm -hmm. but the message that I'm, trying to, that, that I'm trying to promote is you need to think about the consequences of your actions. Mm -hmm. Because the film, the ending of the film is like a double negative. And we see everybody just getting destroyed in this film. You know, it's so much destruction going to take mm -hmm. place. And the consequences of your actions are going to eventually have to be experienced. You're going to have to deal with them. Right. You know, you, you're enjoying the good times now. But once you have to, you know, answer to those right. consequences, Right. You know, a lot of young brothers be like, dog, man, I wish, because I, I go talk to a lot of young brothers in the prison system, and they all say, man, if I had to do it over again, I wouldn't do it. Right. Uh, that's what I hear all the time. Right. But you got to think about that beforehand and say, well, I don't need to do it. And right. I don't need to do things so, you know, with such a stupid mentality and stupid right. approach. So. so you have some solutions for us in this I have in this film. I have some solutions and some of the solutions I weren't I, I wasn't able to like exacerbate or bring out as much as I want. Mm -hmm. my, my major solution, especially in Savannah, is provide more opportunities that are lucrative for African Americans 
and also something that they would want to do mm -hmm. um, instead of pr uh, providing jails. You know, right now Savannah's trying to raise money to build jails. Right. And I don't, for the life of me, I don't understand that. You would rather lock a person up than give them the opportunity to be a productive member of society. And that's what discourages me about our system, the structural inequality that exists. It's, it's, it's just, it exists to keep us locked down, to mm -hmm. keep us trapped, instead of providing us with opportunities to be young filmmakers or, mm -hmm. you know, even, even with science. You know, we, 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 might, we need some black, young black mathematicians, like just black mathematicians, period, mm -hmm. to help groom some of these younger individuals who are afraid of mathematics, are afraid of science because they feel like they can't get it, mm -hmm. but they don't have anyone to relay and convey the subject matter to them in, mm -hmm. in a language that they understand. Mm -hmm. So we have all these different things that negatively impact the opportunities that are available for African Americans, and that's when they go to just doing other things because they don't have any hope. Mm -hmm. And fortunately for me, uh, you know, opportunities were available. Mm -hmm. You know, even though when I, first, when I first went to college, I wanted to be a filmmaker, mm -hmm. but my undergrad is in math. My master's is in film. Mm -hmm. So I picked a degree that I, I saw as something to fall back on, but that wasn't necessarily what I wanted to do. Right. Right. You know, but that was my mentality. But everybody doesn't harbor that mentality, and they aren't expected to. A lot of times people want to go to school and do what they want to do from Jump Street. If they, if they want to be in the filmmaking, that's what they want to do off top. They don't want to have to take a fallback profession. Mm -hmm. And they shouldn't, they shouldn't be forced to. But um, you know, it's fortunate now that Savannah has an art school there that at least caters to a, a diverse, right. Um, right. You know, diverse discipline. Okay, why don't you give us some contact information so we can see, find out more about the movie, find out more about you and your life. It's a okay. fascinating, when I read the bio, it was fascinating to me. So it's definitely something that our audience will be interested in. So give okay. us some contact information, definitely give us a way to get, get, a hold, get our hands on this film. Okay, most definitely, because I want you to get it on everybody <laughs> All right, uh, my uh, MySpace address is myspace.com slash gangsta movie, mm -hmm. and that's gangsta, G-A-N-G-S-T-A-M-O-V-I-E. And the trailer is on that uh, site, as well as, uh, you know, you can email me, contact me, leave comments or whatnot. And we also have production stills on the site as well. Uh, my number is 912-604-5663, and I can be contacted by the cell phone number. And you can, uh, if you don't get me, just leave a message re just regarding any information about the movie. Uh, the movie is scheduled to be, re be released uh, early April. Okay. So... Uh, okay. Just be on the lookout for that. Okay. Yeah. And right. that's pretty well, thank much you it. so much for coming. And thank you for having me. It's been All my right. pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> for more information, log on to our website, www.rulehollywood.com. Next up is Priyanka Karan and her interview with David Days about his feature film series, The American Street Fighters Trilogy. Hey, everyone. I'm Priyanka, and here with us today we have David Days, who is a martial artist a writer, a director, a film, and a filmmaker. So we're very excited to have him on the sh show. So thank you so much for coming. Thank you for having me. And I wanted to start off with asking you a little bit about your background in, mar in martial arts. I've been, I've been in martial arts since I was about nine. I studied roughly about 25 styles. I got various degrees, belts, and various styles. Um, my mainstay are kickboxing, Muay Thai, Jiu Jitsu, and a little bit of Krav Maga. Okay. And how did you get involved into filmmaking? It just kind of evolved over the years. Um, I worked a little bit in film. I, I did some extra parts in, in some Chuck Norris films. Oh, okay. Um, I worked with a guy in Florida that was pretty big in films. I, I mostly did like set design and that's where I learned a lot, a lot okay. from him. Um, directing, running the camera. And, um, I mean, it's like I didn't have formal you know, training, film but training. you kind of had a lot of but, experience. Yeah, from him I got tons of experience. Okay. Cool. I worked off and on with him for about two years. So you kind of used that experience and your knowledge, I guess, in martial arts to go and start doing in the film, especially in the action genre? Yeah, I, 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 you know, the action genre is like my mainstay, but basically um, I, I got with a guy and we did a, a little short mm -hmm. and it just kind of grew from there to, you know, the Street Fighters. Um, I, when I wrote the script, 
it was too too long to be compressed down into one movie. Right. So basically what I did, I split it into three parts. Okay. And it was actually three full features. Three full features. And I shot wow. the first one just as like an exper experimental film. Okay. And it, it worked out great. And you want to tell us a little, just a, maybe a little bit about this movie and kind of I, what it's going to, the idea behind it? I wanted to do it kind of retro, um, mm -hmm. to do each, each one of these films in the trilogy. I wanted to hit the last 30 years of of martial arts from okay. 70s, 80s, and 90s. Oh, wow. The only thing I started from the middle to shoot my way out, um, I started part two first because it, mm -hmm. was, it was my biggest cast. I knew if I can pull that one off, the other two would be all right, you know, it would be a breeze. But the, the, the mainstay, mainstay drop, uh, genre mm -hmm. for Street Fighters two was to film it like the, the martial arts films were filmed in the 70s. Okay. And the 70s martial arts films didn't have a great soundtrack. The 80s had kind of like a almost porn soundtrack uh -huh. to it. It was right. real fruity right. music. So, you know, I, it's basically shot in a 70s style with the 80s music. Wow, so it's kind of a mix and yes, very interesting combo. Mixing, I, I, I like mixing the genres. Part one is more shot in the 80s style of martial arts movies with the same type music. And then part three, if I can get to part three mm -hmm. next year, um, it'll be shot in the 90s style. Okay. With the 90s music. A missing girl and a ruthless kingpin brings Draka back in full force. Follow Draka as he seeks vengeance on the organization that thought they had eliminated him. Street Gods of War. So what is you? What do you think is the biggest challenge you faced while doing these movies? Pooling talent. Pooling talent. Pooling talent is the, like the biggest challenge. So where? I, I mean, <clears throat> your films are pretty much based out of Augusta. Where do you try to get your talent from? I try to pull them from from everywhere: South Carolina, Georgia, mostly. But mm -hmm. I get a I get a big talent pool coming out of South Carolina. Really? Mm-hmm. Okay. The, the, the closest metropolis is Atlanta, which mm -hmm. is about a two two hour drive. Okay. And I get a lot of guys coming from Columbia, which is a one-hour drive. Right. Um, just spread all all out over South Carolina. It's just. Okay. Um, I work with a lot of wrestlers. Oh wow. Yeah, I, I get. I, I use. I like you working with wrestlers because they're actually good actors. Mm hmm It's just part of the, the the sport. Right. And and they like doing the physical work. So you know, doing action films, I can actually almost get two, I can get a crew mm -hmm. and, a, and, and a talent, you know, an actor out of right. one guy. Okay, so that kind of, kind of works, you can do multiple things at the same Multitask, time. Multitask, that's the Multitask. key. Multitask. So what do you think is one of the things you can tell people that especially that may be interested in getting into films and kind of starting out, what is the one thing that you've learned that you think you could pass on to somebody else? Um, just be persistent, that's the main thing. Um, is that kind of what? It, it, it really it kind of depends on your location. Mm -hmm. In Atlanta, there's there's a lot of good independent filmmakers. Right. And and they've done pretty good um, as far as distribution. Right. It's just you know just selling yourself. And speaking selling yourself and being persistent. Uh huh. And speaking of distribution, um, what is the dis status right now in your distribution for your first feature film? I'm trying I'm trying to just like the the film itself is experimental. I'm mm -hmm. trying to experiment with a uh, kind of self self um, distributing in mm -hmm. a way but actually working with actual distributors right. to where I can retain my copyrights. Oh, okay. Because the biggest problem I have with the movie is a, it's a trilogy right. and I, I'd, I'd like to be able to shoot the first and the third one also. Right. And if I sell my copyrights right away. You're not going to be able to probably get that. Yeah, more than, more than likely it won't happen. 
but some of the other films I'm doing, like these horror films, mm -hmm. that are just actually one film. Right. I, I'm just trying to actually sell those and, you know, just keep moving on. Kind of, kind of doing it that way. Um, especially with like a trilogy, the one thing I've heard is that copyright issue and kind of trying to ma manage and maintaining your copyrights to be able to do the other two. Yep, it and is. is it very hard for you to when you go and talk to distributors and stuff since you've you're kind of just start you're starting out and you've got you've got some experience and you've done some other movies, but trying to get them to actually understand that and kind of work out the deal? Yes, yeah, it's, it's a long process. Just like constantly talking, constantly emailing, constantly calling. Mm-hmm. And it's kind of just trying to get that. It's trying to push a rock, basically. That's but I mean, I've, 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 I've actually, you know, got some progress, so. So that's, so that, that's definitely work. great. How long have you been doing this? Have you been kind of doing, making these movies? And I, I started um, Street Fighters a little over, well, not quite two years ago. Okay. But like I said, I, I picked that one first because of all my, all my full feature films, mm -hmm. script-wise, it was the largest cast, and like I said, I knew if I could pull off the largest cast up front, right. everything else. Demon, Demon has about a total of ten casts. Okay, so, so it's, it's a relatively it's a lot smaller. smaller scale, yeah. And, and it's like the more people you have, it's harder to work with. Right. Especially with with guys that you know all have normal jobs. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's like trying to schedule out ten guys for one shoot right, that all work different time. hours is, mm -hmm. is is almost impossible sometimes, but. If you can swing it, you know, it's, it's sweet. So is it kind of different now when you're watching, like now that you're a filmmaker and you're actually doing, you know, making films yourself, is it different watching a movie now? Like do you watch it with a more skeptical or with, you know, more critical eye? Do you, do you notice those things or it's kind of, I you still know. enjoy going to the movies just like everyone else? Well, I enjoy, you know, going to see, you know, the movie, mm -hmm. but I've, I've just always been, for some reason, when I see a movie, I just see it in a different pers perspective, uh -huh. I guess. Um, I always see it uh, when I watch a movie, even for the first time. Right. I just picture it if I would have shot it. Okay. So that's kind of you kind of always you so that's always something that you're thinking in the back of your mind. Yeah, I don't I don't see no reason to be actually critical. Um, people say bad lighting in a movie or something, but mm -hmm. um, to me, I like bad lighting. I right. like good lighting. Mm -hmm. I mean, it just all works. Natural lighting. Mm -hmm. I just just depending on the on the film that I'm actually shooting and what mood. I think the movie should be shot in is kind of like how I try to work my lighting in. Okay, great. And I, I do like using a lot of natural lighting. Great. Well, David, I wanted to thank you very much for coming onto the show. And I, re I really enjoy talking to you and learning about this stuff because it's very, very cool and very exciting. So thank you so much and all the best for your future movies. And, so, and, you, and just for one more time, tell us where we can get a hold of you and, and your contact information. Filmstudio187.com. And my MySpace page is on the front page of the website, so just click it. Okay, great. Well, thank you so much for coming. Thank you. We'd like to thank our guests, Deshaun Bullock and David Days, for appearing on our show. And we'd also like to thank you, the viewers, for joining us. So, be sure to tune in next time for another great episode of Rule Hollywood.